Welcome to Epic Geek Out, the only show on the internet where Gandalf opens up his own airline service, Eagle Express, taking you directly to Mount Doom. I'm your host, Rob. And I'm your host, Chad, and today we're talking about the long-awaited film, The Hobbit, The Un An Unexpected Journey. Keep and the and like always, uh, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash epicgeekout, and also check out the website, www.epicgeekout.com. You can also check us out over Twitter, at Epic Geek Out, and also please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, that way you'll get all of our new episodes. But let's get into our review of The Hobbit. So we just got out of an early screening of The Hobbit, which is the prequel, for those of you who don't know, of the Lord of the Rings films. You know, the book, you know, definitely came first and <laughs> whatnot. But uh, we did see it in 3D. Uh, you know, there's a lot of talk with this film that, you know, there's a high frame rate. I don't, I don't think we saw that version. I think it was normal frame rate, but it was 3D, so we can comment on that. Uh, there's... Returning cast of characters uh, from the movies uh, before them. Uh, really, the new main star is Martin Freeman, who uh, plays the younger version of Bilbo Baggins. And The Hobbit is the story. You know, we met old Bilbo in the Lord of the Rings uh, books, but this is his story on kind of how movies. he came. Yeah, right. Yeah, to how he came to be and the adventures that he had when he was younger. Uh, you know, a lot of great new actors in it. You know, too many to name all of them. Uh, but Chad, what did you think of The Hobbit? Damn you, George Lucas! Because he ruined prequels for me. So I was not looking forward to this <laughs> movie like, at all. At all. Um, mm -hmm. I knew it was going to be good, but I there's a couple things that I was worried about. Number one, retreading old ground. was hugely worried about that. Um, also, just the fact that it was all dwarves in it and a hobbit, because the hobbit stuff in the Lord of the Rings movies was probably my least favorite part of that. Mm -hmm. um, I like the other characters a lot more. The hobbit's kind of journey was just them sort of walking to, to Mordor, mm -hmm. you know, um, and just, it, it was just not something that I was like interested in seeing a whole movie of. I was like, how can you go and back Gandalf there? Gandalf is big in this, you know, I guess I right. should say that too, yeah. Gandalf is. But, you know. but still, I mean, how can you go to that well and pull out those mm -hmm. epic battles in the fields, you know, all that sure. stuff. Um, and I was also just worried, like, how do you do this again? How do you go back? This is a, over 10 years old, uh, mm -hmm. the, the Lord of the Rings, so how do you go back there and make this enjoyable? Well, I was wrong. It was, uh, it was, awesome on every count. I love how uh, Peter Jackson really understands this world. Like he has it in his head and guess what? It comes back on screen and it feels like you just left. You were mm -hmm. just there. And it didn't feel old but familiar. And it was Agreed. awesome. You just felt the comfortable, music. happy. The music was so good because they brought in the themes from Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. that you knew but then added new stuff. Um, so it just felt like you were at home with people that you, you, you missed, you know? Mm -hmm. And they brought in like characters from Lord of the Rings um, but not like in your face. We're gonna bring back these characters, you know, like it made sense like, for them, like an Anakin there. Skywalker in you know mm -hmm. the, the prequels. But it made sense when they were in there, and part of that's the credit of uh, Tolkien. But you know, it just felt like it, it was completely warranted. Everything, every mm -hmm. decision that was made was warranted. As far as the 3D goes, I wasn't overly impressed, but I'm not like a big 3D person. Um, I, I felt at times it was a little too blurry for my. Uh, ability to, to catch mm -hmm. the action and maybe the 48 frames per second will fix that but you know for me I, I just got I went cross-eyed at a couple points <laughs> so you know but I mean I'm sure a lot of pe other people will like it um, there were points that were really awesome with the 3D like uh, they're uh, in Rivendell and you could see the water kind of trickling down mm -hmm. just really cool stuff but then like the wide angle shots I feel like they could have made a little bit more depth oriented mm -hmm. like when they first see Rivendell it looked cool but all there really was was the hobbits and then or the, the dwarves and then Rivendell sure um, other than that I mean Martin Freeman is amazing in this movie he really like embodies the part and just is awesome you know and I'm not someone I I didn't read the Lord of the Rings books but I did know the story of the Hobbit a little mm -hmm. bit because it was read to me as a child but do not remember what kind of happens so I was kind of interested in what was gonna happen next and while there was nothing as big as like the the big battles in the Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. um, it was still action-packed one thing that I was uh, not liking at first was a lot of exposition in the beginning <laughs> like it was really just let's walk to this place and then just talk in a room for mm -hmm. 10 minutes and I was starting to get really worried but about flashbacks too yeah, yeah right yeah. but yeah. that's kind of the trope of Lord mm -hmm. of the Rings did that too but about a third of the way through it kind of switched to like a kind of the, the journey film mm -hmm. um, on the road and then action pack stuff and the action stuff was really awesome and it left me just like Fellowship left me where I was really ready just to see what's gonna happen next so I'm really excited for 
the other two movies, even though when I heard they're making three, I was like, really? It's one book. How do yeah, you make yeah. three? But I, I don't know what's going to come next, so I'm hoping some. Cool I think stuff. it's a shorter book too than any of the other yeah. books that yeah, made yeah. their own movie. Awesome. Man. Yeah. So this movie, I, I was excited. I'm a big fan of Martin Freeman. You know, he's tremendous in Sherlock or Hitchhiker's Guide. You know, just re I do enjoy him as an actor, and I think he is the core of this movie. And I don't think that they could have picked someone better for it. Uh, just his little facial expressions, his little ticks, his little. Like little like moments like here and there yeah. were just so well placed and so well timed. You see him as a character go from someone who was unsure of joining this quest, which I love that they called a quest, <laughs> uh, and then yeah. really gets behind it. And you know he has his journey in this movie, even though you know even what you know they, they needed a burglar. Yeah. And he, he's he's not even that, but he yeah. has his moments of redemption and things along those lines. Yeah. Uh, the fight scenes, the fight scenes in this movie had this poetic nature to them. Whereas, I and it's good and bad. So let's you know take it uh, from both sides. They had this like poetry to them where every hit was this you know swinging hit of either a battle hammer or an axe. And, you know, the dwarves were fighting in unison, which yeah. kind of like in a fight scene, there were more like three people because they were kind of fighting li in little squadrons that would switch off and kind of stuff. And it had this really beautiful poetry to it, whereas eh, less realistic than, you know, the Lord of the Rings movies, just because it, it was never broken from that. And, you know, it made sense and it was... It was great to watch. Uh, there, I mean, I definitely want to see this movie again. Are you talking about like the Rube Goldbergness of like their fight scenes, mm -hmm. where like, like this guy would hit this and it would yeah, and then, spring this guy? And yeah, this thing. guy would yeah. throw this weapon to this guy. He'd yeah. catch it in the air while swinging, take yeah. this guy out, do a flip, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's really cool. interesting fight scenes. Um, the different worlds that they were fighting in—it it was the forest, the caves, to you know the sides of mountains. So it definitely had this epic feel to it, which I was concerned they weren't going to be able to get. You know, I, I didn't think that there were these fight scenes, and I think they established who's bad in this pretty well. Um, you know, gave you a face to see if this bad guy who's you I know, was kind of hoping I don't crazy. know if you agree but I was kind of hoping he was kind of eliminated in this first movie mm. sort of like yeah. in the fellowship that the one main uh, orc guy yeah. was kind of mm -hmm. cuz I think it would've been cool but but yeah, I guess cool he's kind of like over. one of the over um, arcing stories but yeah I I just enjoyed this movie uh the the level of comfortability is just like Chad said it's there you know it, it starts off in the shire uh, some you know characters are in it from the older book you know I don't want to the older movies, I'm sorry, I don't want to spoil anything. And so it's just like, ah, the music's playing again. It's yeah. like, you know, those years didn't happen in my home. life. You know, you're, <laughs> you're just you're just back in something that's so great. Um, the settings of the world are awesome. I mean, and it, it's beautifully shot and beautifully rendered, the colors. Um, I thought all the dwarves were very interesting looking. I mean, yeah. uh, maybe, I, and you know, you can't fault them for us because you know it's based on the book but there were maybe a little too many characters yeah sometimes like, I don't, you can pick out like you can't pick out weren't the strong were. uh personalities like mm. it, I, you you know i was worried i was gonna miss like legolas and, and while i did mm. you know it, they're, they're they're they all had a little and bit i'm of sure you know we will too. pick up more on them as other movies yeah you know we see them and then we go back and see this again but you know if you're a fan of the lord of the rings you just have to see this movie and there's a lot of different options to see it you know, 2D, is it 48 frames per second, 3D, IMAX. So, I mean, definitely before you see the movie, just do a little bit of research on what they're showing and, you know, just so you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's a Hobbit movie. Yeah. Directed one, by Peter Jackson. Yeah, it's it is. Be it's back. awesome. Um, one thing I do want to say quick, uh, one thing I was worried about is, like, this book came before the movie, mm -hmm. or book came before Lord of the Rings in, you know, writing of the books. But the movie, obviously, is a prequel. Lord of the Rings was already out. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of worried that, like, that storyline would have kind of, oh, you know what happens, you know sure. what happens in Lord of the Rings. But that's just a, a small part of this, mm -hmm. but, like, in such a cool way. Yeah. Whereas you're like, ooh, that's that's cool, like, that's from that and that's from that, where Agreed. you can kind of connect it. But, like, the main storyline of this has nothing to really do with Lord of the Rings because mm -hmm. it's them taking like, back kind of that looming darkness or, right. or, or things like that and, and definitely mentions and I'm sure there are a ton of Easter eggs that we even 
missed. Right. Um, so whereas like Star year. Wars is like an unnecessary prequel because it's Darth Vader's story and you already mm -hmm. know what's going to happen there. Yes, yeah, so you know what's going to happen to some of these characters, but a lot of them you don't know. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that happens is pretty cool, you know. So yeah, I, I completely agree. So, you know, definitely go out and check out The Hobbit. So it's that time of the episode where we like to give our thanks for the day. Chad, what are you thankful for today? Did you know that I like Apple? No. You didn't know. Well, I love Apple, yeah. and I got a chance to catch um, an interview of Tim Cook, who's the current CEO of Apple, on uh, Rock what Center. What happened to Steve Jobs? That's, that's really mean. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, it's not really funny. Um, yeah, so Tim Cook, a lot of people worried about him because a lot of people think Apple is Steve Jobs, and, and to a degree it is, but um, the interview really kind of was interesting, kind of his philosophy behind Apple, how he kind of fits in the puzzle piece of Apple, what Steve kind of said to him, which was really cool. He, uh, Steve Jobs told him, you know, towards the end where he was leaving Apple in his hands to, to never question what Steve would have done, which I think is a really cool thing for a guy who was the company for so long and it was kind of his way or the highway to say that and pass it along to somebody else. But really interesting, it's on uh, online on NBC.com. You can check it out or YouTube I think has it as well. But if you're at all interested, it has some pretty interesting insights. Apple's actually bringing some jobs over to the US next year. They're gonna produce some of their computer lines yeah, in the US, which is really cool. And also a little nugget of information about the television set, which we'll hopefully see soon. So it's really cool if you're at all a fan of Apple, check it out, uh, the Rock Center interview with Tim Cook. Yeah, so I would like to give my thanks uh, for some news on a new show that uh, I think it's Disney Channel or a, yep, yeah, something like that. Disney Channel. So yep. for our generation, we grew up with this show called Boy Meets World, and it is the Boy Meets World. Just okay. absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I think it, it, everyone has seen an episode or all of them, like most of us. And so there's been recent news that uh, I'm sure most of you have seen it traveling around on Facebook, but they are going to be doing a spinoff of Boy Meets World, and it's going to be Girl Meets World uh, with the, some returning cast, um, and it's just awesome. It I've, could I've, be really awful. Though. It could be <laughs> really so bad. I have a feeling it's going to blow the ratings for that time yeah, slot yeah. out of the water yep. for the first two episodes if they're back-to-back. And then it is going to have the steepest drop off. I don't know. Um, I'm wondering if it's like gonna be like one of the new Disney sitcoms that like feels like that, or if it's gonna feel. I think like they're gonna try to make it feel as much as they can. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be really cool. But you know, it's just exciting news for anyone who grew up with Boy Meets. Speaking World. of which, which I've been following Ben Savage on Twitter now mm -hmm. because of it, and he's really creepy. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> well, he is a really creepy guy. I hope he doesn't bring that to this show. <laughs> but uh, thanks for tuning in for another week of shows, and we'll be back next week with some more.